What's up everyone, this is Bill with BLR Tuning. Today's video, I'm just gonna go over how to use the DinoJet C3 software and how to accept the trims from Auto-Tune. So this is just gonna cover the Auto-Tune stuff. Um, we do carry the WB2, which uh, has Auto-Tune and it can be used for multiple different bikes. Um, you could even use it for one bike and to be able to auto-tune with your Power Commander 6 or if you have an older Power Commander 5. And then you can remove that by, pop the auto-tune module, the WB2. You could remove it and install it onto the next bike. Um, we use them around the shop all the time to help with auto-tuning and stuff like that if that's what we're doing, if that's, if that's our method of tuning. So it is a very universal item. It has, The WB2 has a green wire coming off of it that is for a narrow band signal so that would go in place of your factory o2 sensor to the ecu and be able to tell it what signal is coming in um, it's programmable so it does quite a bit of different features some you may use some you may not use you can plug in a afr gauge uh, you can plug in a lambda gauge um, there's all kinds of different stuff you can do with that WB2 device. So not only is it auto-tuned, it's also wideband. It can be read out through Pod 300 digital display if you have that plugged into your Power Commander. Um, and then you can view AFR and Lambda values. Uh, you can also set up that narrowband output through the Pod 300 digital display versus doing it here. Okay, so what I want to show you guys is you will see... First, let's show you how to set up the narrow band if you're using it, okay? It's very important that you just understand what it is and if you're using it or not. Um, you'll see a WB2 device. I don't have one connected here. I have a PC6 connected. This would normally be lit up. So right now I can't click on it. So that's where it says WDB device and it shows a little configure, little gear wrench icon. Um, these, uh, the icons, keep in mind, they are subject to change if they update the software, that type of stuff. But you can see right here where it says WB2 device. Um, this would be your wideband too. If you click on that, a little toast message, a little box will come up and you are selecting the Lambda value. So you'll need to convert that. You can look online, there's all kinds of calculators on how to convert Lambda over to AFR. If you're trying to figure out AFR numbers, um, you can convert Lambda to AFR and then you would enter the corresponding Lambda number. Okay, now let's say you bought a power commander a while ago from us from dynajet wherever and now you're ordering the wb2 if you order it with the power commander from us it'll all already be set up in the software if you order the wideband separately then you'll need to come in here and set it up okay because we don't have a way to set it up unless it's plugged into a power commander um, we can kind of set it up by plugging in through usb itself but as far as in the software with your power commander you're going to need to enable it so we plugged in our PC6. Um, if this was on the bike, we'd have PC6 plugged in with the wideband installed, and then we would have the key on and the kill switch in the run position. And then we're going to go over here to, you can see it loaded up the map. If it didn't, then you can hit receive, and it will receive this file from the device, the Power Commander 6 in this case, to the software. Okay, and then that's this send and receive buttons up here remember we're not doing anything as far as live data so if you make any changes in here like you accept the trims from autotune when you're done you need to hit send map okay in order to send that back to the power commander okay so what we need to do first is go up here to configure this is the first gear wrench icon over here to the right you can see we're on the home tab you can see you have view maps you have all kinds of stuff we're on the home tab that's where it will be from default and then we need to click on the configure button and we're gonna click on auto tune. This is all your different features, rev extend, quick shift, all kinds of stuff, okay? And we have videos on the majority of this. So we're gonna click on auto tune. It's gonna come up with this window. Your window may look just a little different, but you need to hit auto tune enabled. We're gonna check that box. And then it shows sensor. There's only one because on this bike, there's only going to be one O2 sensor. Something like your Harley may have two O2 sensors. Okay. And then uh, required runtime by default is 60 seconds. You can see right here. So that means the bike has to run for 60 seconds before auto-tune is enabled. And then you can also click on engine temperature. Um, if you have a properly working uh, temperature sensor on the bike, then you can put it as running on temp 
and maybe put it at like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This way, Autotune can't turn on and start throwing numbers at you based on a cold start. Okay? And then maximum enrichment, maximum enlimit, we recommend just leaving it at 20. You can change those numbers if you want to, though. Basically, this is saying Autotune can recommend 20% more fuel up or recommend that it needs less fuel. 20% is the max. Okay, that's what that is uh, showing you there. So if we click Autotune, we're just going to leave it all by default. That's fine. We're going to hit OK. Okay, that sent that, that already wrote that to the device. So now Autotune is on, on the Power Commander. Now we go out and ride the bike. And when we come back, we plug in our Power Commander. And we see, we click on Autotune over here. This is called the Explorer, this window here. Okay, so you see we have fuel adjustments. You'll see right now, your primary fuel percentage may say zeros. Okay, if you got a tune from us, our tuning is done in this base fuel map. These are just some random numbers we put in just so you can show you. But this is where our tuning's done. You may not see it. So on your screen, it may look like zeros. That's fine. Don't be alarmed. Your tune is there. You just can't see it because we have a different login. Same with the ignition timing. You may only see primary. We may see base. Okay. So we our adjustments may be in the base and you may not be able to see them. And that's fine. It just some logins may not have access to everything. Our login has access to everything, okay? So what we're clicking on and looking for is Autotune Trims. We know Autotune has now been added and on. And then you can see I put the number seven here. So this would probably never show up up here. You may have numbers way out here. They may be way down here. They may only be at wide open throttle. Just depends on where there is actual AFR numbers. And I'll show you that. And that is where you'll see uh, fuel trims if there is any needed. Okay, so you can see we have a number right here. So we can come over here and we're going to right click and we're going to go accept all trims. Okay, you can clear trims or you can delete the trims right there. Okay, um, if we go look at our base fuel, our, our auto tune trim is going to show up here. So you can see that says zero right now. If we go to auto tune, we can we can uh, right click over here. So you can see all I did is click on auto tune and then right click. Okay, accept all trims. Says, do you want to add these to your to the perspective solution? Basically, what this is doing is this is taking that number seven, and auto tune said, hey, to get to this desired air to fuel ratio, let's say we had it at fourteen seven right there. To get there, we need 7% more fuel, okay? So, we will say yes, and now it's going to add that number to our fuel map, and this automatically is reset back to zero. So now if you go back into our base, you can see we now have the number seven here. This is our fuel map. So that auto-tune trim table has been added to our fuel map, okay? So now we can, we can click on this and put it back to uh, our zero. We don't really need that, but just wanted to show you that's the idea. So, where is Autotune suggesting trim values? You can see it would never suggest anything there because this, what I've clicked on here is target AFR. So target AFR is used for the Autotune. So if we had this bike had Autotune, the only spot that it's ever gonna see any numbers is here and here where we have AFR numbers punched in. So. That is assuming sometimes you'll see this be a big setup like this. Sometimes it'll look like this. It'll go all the way down to 7,500 RPM, all the way out to 60, and this will all be zero. Okay. When that's the case, that's because the O2 sensor is controlling the closed loop area. So some bikes have different ranges where the, the ECU considers open loop and closed loop. Um, Power Commander can control open loop. It cannot control closed loop. It'll be fighting with the factory O2 sensor. Now, if you're using the auto tune and you're using the green wire, then the green wire is controlling the closed loop area. So these again would be all zeros. And then all of our power commander fuel adjustments would be out here at 80% up to 100% throttle position. That's what this is, throttle position. And then this is RPM. So you can see this bike would be 7,750 7, RPM 
and up in the RPM, and then 80% throttle and up is what the power commander is controlling, and that narrowband O2 sensor wire would be controlling this. These would all be a zero. That way, autotune would never suggest any trim values in here. It's all done based on that narrowband wire, and then our fuel adjustments, autotune would make suggestions out here if there is some needed. Now, if you don't, if your bike doesn't have an O2 sensor, then Power Commander can control 100% of the fuel map. So if your bike didn't have an O2 sensor, you would have AFR numbers all the way out here and this whole thing, and then now your autotune will work for this whole entire fuel map. Okay? So if you have questions, please feel free to send me an email. It's blrtuning.tech at gmail.com. You can always reach out to us that way. You can go check out our website, blrtuning.co. We carry tons of DinoJet products for tons of different bikes. If you don't see your bike on there, hit me up, let me know, and we'll try to get it added over there so we can help support what you're doing to get your bike tuned correctly. Okay, if you want to download the DinoJet PowerCore software, all you need to do, this is what it'll look like when you first open it. You'll see C3, that's what you're clicking on. That's how you get here, and then you go here, okay? If we minimize that, we can go to uh, dinojet.com. Okay, so here we are, dinojet.com. We're on their website. Uh, you can click on a device if it's showing you this from the main page. Or to get here, all you could do is go down to the bottom, click over here where it says support, so click downloads. Okay, it's going to take you here to this screen. We're going to click on Power Commander 6, and then we're going to click on software. If there's a firmware update available, you'll see that here as well under firmware. Okay, so we're going to click on software and we're going to download PowerCore Suite. Okay, that's what I'm covering right now. You can use the Power Commander 5 software for a Power Commander 5. Power Commander 5, the device, will work in PowerCore, so will Power Commander 6. Power Commander 6 will only work in PowerCore. Okay, so you'd click download, install your PowerCore software. Okay. And then when you go down here and open it, it's going to be this little tab here, what that looks like right there. You're going to click on C3, and you're going to come here. So if you're accepting your trims from AutoTune, open PowerCore software, click on tuning with C3 software. You're going to click on, what I like to do is click receive. You're going to receive the current map from the bike. This is with the bike plugged into the USB cable, plugged into the laptop key in the on position, kill switch in the run position, click receive. It should do it automatically if it doesn't. Click receive. Okay. And then we're going to go auto-tune trims. We're always just going to click on that. So this is after a ride if we already have auto-tune turned on. We should see some numbers in here. If you don't, don't be alarmed. Maybe you just didn't get to those ranges where numbers are being uh, added. Okay. And we can, again, we can see where numbers would be added by clicking on target AFR. Okay. If you see numbers here, right click. You can see there's no numbers, so there's no options. But if I go in here and I add the number four, now if I click right click, you see it gives me the option to accept all trims or clear trims. Okay, so I can hit accept all trims, then I'm gonna hit send map. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. We'll just hit that. We can go, uh, yep, we can go send map. And you can see it flashed there, and then it says solution sent successfully. Um, if you, and now our autotune trims are back to zero. If we want to verify that everything's sent correctly, we can just hit receive map, and we still see zero in our autotune trims. That means we did okay. That means everything is done correctly. Um, if you downloaded a tune from us via email, okay, if we sent you out a tune, Power Commander is always going to show this as a name. It might show something different on yours, but like let's say if we load something that says BLR Tuning Custom Tune, and it says it here temporarily, and then the next time we hit Receive Map or plug it in, it says Power Commander 6.dsh or Power Commander 6.pc6. Uh, Whatever it says here, that's fine. Don't be alarmed. Um, the tune isn't gone. It just changes the name automatically. The name doesn't stay like it would on a Power Vision 3, something like that. Okay, and then you can always click on notes and you'll see our notes there. Um, a little note window will pop up and uh, it'll tell you, you know, BLR tuning, custom tune, whatever, where it came from, or if it was a download tune from DinoJet, it'll tell you what it's for. Anyway, that is how you accept the trims for auto tune.
literally click on auto tune right click if there's nothing here it's because there's nothing in auto tune if we right click and it hit accept all trims it's adding it to our fuel map then hit it send map anyway i hope this information helps somebody out again you can go check us out blrtuning.co and uh, grab yourself a power commander for your bike grab yourself a auto tune module grab yourself a quick shift and we have videos on how to set it all up using the DinoJet PowerCore software. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. There'll be a link in the description below to our website and how to get a hold of me.